In this lesson, we are going to be creating an HTML file that we're going to run as a web app within the browser. So this is the contents of the file. We're also going to be passing over data from our Google Apps script into the client side and then rendering that out within the console using JavaScript. And then once it's within the JavaScript, then you can make use of any one uh, pieces of this content within the JavaScript object. So we are going to be creating and using the doGet method creating a template from file. So the file is going to be called index.html. And this is where our client side of code is going to go. And this is just regular straight front end code. Other than that, uh, we're using the scriptlet in order to access some of the Google app script backend values, and then pull that into the client side. And we're pulling it into a JavaScript variable called data V. And then we're also outputting that data object into the browser. So that's what you see here when you go down to the array and the val, that's actually coming from the Google Apps Script. So we're setting up and creating an HTML object. We're populating and adding a data queue object to this HTML object. We're outputting and evaluating the HTML. So we're creating the output from that evaluation and then returning it, which allows us to have that show up within the browser. And then also we're going to be walking through how we can do the deployment. So once we've made some updates to it, we can update it as version two, and that will render it out into the executable. And the executable is the one that you can share publicly that others can be able to access. And then also you can control who has access to it. So you can set it up that you have access to it. You can set it up that uh, anyone with a Google account has access. Uh, anyone within your organization if you're using a workspace account and then also anyone that has the web URL can access it. So there's a number of options when you do deploy the web app. So let's get started. Go ahead and log into your Google account and what we're going to be doing is we're setting up a new project. So I'm over at script.google.com and I'm selecting brand new project. You can also go through your drive selecting the new button in the top left corner and then go down to where you see the Google Apps script icon and this also will allow you to open up a brand new standalone script. So starting the new project, we're going to give our project a name. I'm going to call it Uploader V2 and create that brand new standalone object. I'm also going to increase the size of the output for the browser. So that's better and easier to see for the recording of this video. So first up, we're going to start out with a function that's going to create a web app. So the web app is going to be the container where we're going to have our upload files, and then we're going to be uploading to a specific folder within our Google Drive. So there is a default function that allows us to run web apps, and that's going to be the do get function. And this is going to be for the web app. Whenever the browser opens up the web app, it's going to look for a function within your Google app script called do get, and it's going to run the code contained within do get. So next we want to create an HTML template. So we can do that using the HTML service object within Google app script. And then from there, what we're doing is we're creating a template from a file, and then we're going to create a file called index and have that within that Google Apps Script folder. So we've got all of the files and we want to add a brand new file which is going to be called index and this is the one that we're going to be opening up which is going to allow us to create some front end code and run that within the browser of the web app. So selecting the files and you've got two options here. You can do a script file or an HTML file and the one that we want to use is the HTML. So HTML is basically for any of your front end code that you want to run. So that also includes that you could add in styling for CSS styling as well as JavaScript. So now that we've got the index file set up, this is going to be the file that's going to run. So within here, I will just write hello world or hello. And we'll close off the H1 tag. So this is standard front end code, just some standard HTML, and it gives you the basic HTML template with the doc type, HTML uh, opening and closing tags. So now that we've got the file created that we're selecting with the Google Apps Script, we're going to be running the contents of the file. So what we want to do is we want to create our output. 
And so we would use our basic HTML template and evaluate the contents of that. And this is gonna allow us to pass in more dynamic code when we do the evaluate of the template. And also allow us to pass in object details into the front end client code. And in order to complete this function, the doGet function does require the return and the return of that output content is what is gonna get rendered out within the browser. So once we've set this up, we're ready to deploy it. And there's a couple options for when you are deploying it. Uh, so if you were to just run the function, you're not gonna see anything because this is gonna be uh, creating the HTML service within the browser. And we do need to uh, run it within the web app location in order to see the contents being output. So if within the execution log, we're not gonna see anything other than the script ran and completed. So at least we know there's no bugs within the script. Uh, next up, we want to deploy it to the web app location. So under the big blue deploy button near the top, you can deploy the project. And you've got a few options here. So while you're in your development mode, you can do the test deployments. And what the test deployments will do is they give you an opportunity to create a testable area that you can work with. So we select the type, select web app, and now this is gonna allow us to deploy a web app that we can use and we can deploy the web app URL for testing. You are gonna to need to be logged into your Google account in order to see it. If you do wanna share it with others, then you'd have to share and set the share permissions of your app script within your app script dashboard for others to be able to see it. So let's go over to do a new deployment. So we can also manage deployments. So that will give us any current deployments. And right now the project doesn't have any deployments. And that's why we don't also don't have a testing URL. Uh, so what we wanna do first up is just do a new deployment. So we're against, we're selecting the type, which is the web app. And then here we can have a description for what we want to do within this web app. So I'm calling it uploader v2. Uh, who the code is going to be executing as. Uh, so this is going to be the code that's running within the app script, who is going to be executing. So you have two options here. If you select the user accessing the web app, then they're going to have to accept permissions in order to run the code. And also if you're interacting with any files that your account has permissions with, they're not going to be able to see those. So unless they're shared with them. Uh, so usually, typically for executing the app, I execute the app as my Google account. And then next up you have who will be able to access the web app URL. So this is where you can see set that anyone with a Google account, only yourself and anyone. So I'm just gonna be setting it as anyone and hit deploy. So this is gonna create my web app URL. So the URL is down here at the bottom. It's got the deployment ID. So let's go ahead and select the script. And then when we render the code, we see that we've got that file being rendered there. We can also go to now the test deployments. And now we've got a web app testing URL. So you can copy and use this in order to see changes. And the differences between the two is that one has ends with dev, the other one ends with exec, and that's gonna be the executable, and this is the developer version. So when you go back into your application, and if you were to update any of the code, that update is only gonna be visible within the dev area until you redeploy it. So if you go over to the executable and you're wondering why your code hasn't changed, that means that you need to redeploy it. And generally, as you're developing it, you're gonna have the developer open. You can test what you see within the output. And then once you're happy with that, and once you've completed all of your changes and updates, then you typically would redeploy it to the executable. And then this is the public facing one that others are able to see and interact with. So let's say you can set up a basic web app. And now this is gonna be just running typical front end code. So here you can add in styling if you want as well. So if you want to set the background color to red for the styling, you can add in styling into it. And let's go over to the dev. And that will automatically change the background. So this is just a demonstration that you can add in styling. You can also add in script. So just as you would 
interacting with any front end code. And a lot of times when I am developing this code, I will use an editor as it's a lot easier and then just copy and paste it back into the HTML file within the app script. So it depends on what your preference is. And here we can do something like we can do a console log and output some contents into the console and save that. And now let's uh, refresh the page, go into and select the inspect within the browser so we can see the console message. And there we've got the hello being rendered out within the console. And you're going to see that there's quite a lot of other alerts here. Uh, so these are just because uh, this is wrapped within the Google app script. Uh, so keep in mind that it is rendering out the code, uh, but there is a whole lot of other code that's running in the background as well. And your browser will typically flag all of that information. So we do have the code being rendered, but there is other stuff that's running in the background as well. Now, in order to pass data to your front end code, and because we are doing the evaluate, we can attach that data to the HTML object. So for instance, if we want the HTML and we want to have some data here, we can create an object. And if we had an array of items, so I'm just adding in some random data here to show that how you can get the content across. And if you had uh, a value here and save that. And now if we want to, when we render it out into the executable, we're not going to see any difference right now. Uh, and that means that we can also use the HTML, the front end code to pick up the JavaScript and pick up the data object that's running in the background. So using JavaScript in order to do that. So in order to pass through data, you can open and close the script tags there and set it up as a data object. And then using the scriptlet for Google Apps Script. So this will allow us to run the Google Apps Script where we can take the JSON and do a stringify. and returning back the data object. And so this again is coming from this HTML data. So it's passing this data object as data. So that's what we're picking up here in the JavaScript or in the client side, and then rendering that out within the JavaScript. And then, so this scriptlet will allow us to break over to the Google Apps Script, run some Google Apps Script, and then uh, render it out within the client side within the front end code. So here, if we want to see what data is contained within the data object that we just set up, we can do it this way. And going over to the executable or the devil version, we can now see that we were successfully able to pass content and data from our Google app script side over to the client side to the web app. And then we can use this as we would regular JavaScript as this is now a JavaScript object called data. And you can call it and name it others as well. So this doesn't have to be data, it can be data V and however you want to reference it within your JavaScript code. And this needs to be data as I'm referencing it over here with data. Uh, but once again, if you want to make changes to it and reference it as data Q, then that will work as well. Cause it's just referencing that same object on the front end and then on the back end with the Google Apps Script side.